So today we're going to look at section 12D again. I'm going to revisit some of it. But this time we're, we're going to be finding rules when we're given a diagram or a drawing. All right? So very easy to do, to do, but just a different approach. So I want to make sure that we've had a chance to look at it as well as practice the just generally finding a rule. All right. So let's talk about how we, can, how we can make this happen. If you have a drawing, then it's simply a matter of counting the items that you have. Okay? So first, you're going to count the number of items. And sometimes they'll use drawings of, act, of um, you know, like one they use cans. Or sometimes it'll be matchsticks. Sometimes it'll just be lines. Sometimes it's dots, sometimes it's squares. So that's why I'm using the generic term items. But it doesn't matter what kind of items you have. You're just going to be counting them. Count the number of items in the first drawing. Now, again, pay attention to the items because they could say triangles or it could be matchsticks making up a triangle. If it's triangles, then one triangle is one, right? But if it's matchsticks making up a triangle, that's not one, but how many matchsticks make up a triangle? Three, okay? So pay close attention to what shapes you're doing. Don't just glance at it and look, because this book, for some reason, will connect the lines even if it's matchsticks, which doesn't make any sense because matchsticks don't get connected when you put them together, right? But the drawings look funny sometimes, so be sure that, to read carefully. All right. Okay. Why that's not working? This gives your first ordered pair. Because remember, what you're doing is you're finding x values and y values or ordered pairs, right? And in your chart. You have X and Y. Now, they'll change the letters to represent the items that they're using. For example, if they're using the number of matchsticks and the number of triangles it makes, they may say triangles and matchsticks. Doesn't matter what letters you use, right? They, as long as you get them in the right order, okay? And the, the shape is always the first one. So if you're doing... If you're doing uh, matchsticks and making triangles out of matchsticks, you created a triangle from the matchsticks. So triangles would be the top. Now, whatever that first one is, the first shape is, so the name of it, so, I'm sorry, don't put shape there. The, the, uh, the top column is going to always be the drawing you're looking at, okay? The number of the drawing. So your first drawing, your second drawing, your third drawing, etc., right? Or your first combination of these things, or your second combination of these things, or your third one. So that's where you're getting your x values. And remember, when we're doing these rules, we really need those x values to be one, two, three, right? They all they need to be they need to be counted in ones, okay? <coughs> Now, the second one is the number of items. So number of matchsticks, whatever, okay? So the first drawing, second drawing, third drawing. Uh, the first drawing took three matchsticks, so that means the number would be three, etc. okay? So you just, so those give you your things. So the number of the drawing is your X value. And the number of items in that drawing is your y value. And again, I always call them x and y's. That's the generic terms. But if you have specific items, they'll label them different letters depending on the items. You should always name them according to the items if that's possible, right? unless they ask you to use specific letters. Be careful about that because if they ask you to use T and D, for example, 
then that's what I need to see on your, on your work. Otherwise, you'll get some points counted off, right? So be careful. All right. Then all you're going to do is once you find those numbers for the first one, then you're just going to move to the second one, the third one, the fourth one, etc. And generally, these things have five values in them. Some charts might be a little bigger. Some charts might be a little smaller. But if you're making your own, five is about the minimum that I would expect to see. So you would do the first five numbers in the pattern. Because you really want to make sure that you firmly establish the pattern. Because it could be possible that you could miscount, etc. So you want to make sure that it's really making the pattern. Technically, you can make the pattern with just two of them, right? But that's not enough to make sure that you have the right thing. And then from there, you're simply going to use that common difference algorithm. to find the rule. Okay, and those are all of your steps. All right, so let's just go to the book and look at an example. So here we have example two. It says a pile of matchsticks is used to make the following pattern of shapes. So you see, that's what I was talking about, how they connected them. These just look like triangles, don't they? Yes, but what we're doing is we're gonna be counting the lines that make up the triangle, because they're saying they, they're matchsticks. Do you see? how sometimes that could be a little confusing, so you make sure you read, because they could just as easily say that these shapes are being made from triangles. And if that was the case, diagram one would have one triangle. But instead, they're saying it has three matchsticks, so that means diagram one has three items in it, right? So, and if you want, you can just put those numbers here, and then we can put them in the chart. So here are my original matchsticks that I use for diagram one. So diagram two has, is made by adding two more. So it has five matchsticks. And if you counted those, it has seven. And then I don't need to count them anymore because what do you, you notice that they're two apart. It's going up by two. So once you get a few of them done, then you can just use arithmetic to find the others, either add or subtract. It's always add or subtract, right, for these linear patterns. Okay? Right? And then, we, once we have that information, we can put it on our chart. So, here we go, looking at the, counting the number of triangles, you see that they've already filled in some of them for you. That's not always going to be the case, but in this one they did. And we know they're going up by two, so if it's four, you're gonna have nine. If it's five, you're gonna have 11. If it's six, you're gonna have 13, right? So once you get to a certain point, then you can just add the rest to find the for, to find the others. Okay, all right. So now that I have the chart, now I can find the rule by using that common difference algorithm. Okay, so let's just recreate the chart and then do some notebook use some notebook paper so it'll make it a little easier to see. So it's one, three. Two, five, three, seven, four, nine, and that's enough of them. <coughs> Why am I? And it's not drawing very well. Okay. All right. And those are my X's, those are my Y's, and again, they might have used different letters, but I'm off that page, so I'll come back to it in a minute. We'll find out. Now, so here's what we're going to do. So looking at your notes, making sure you understand how this, how this works. The first thing is to find the common difference. So remember, you just subtract the first one from the second one. So 5 minus 3 gives me 2. Then the next 2, 7 minus 5 gives me 2. Two. And remember, anytime you're doing differences or change, because what we're trying to find here is change, it's always the second one minus the first one, the third one minus the second one. You always go to the, you always, you don't do them out of order or else you're going to get the wrong sign. Okay? So, nine minus seven, 
gives me two. So that means my common difference is a two. Now my general form for these is always y equals mx plus b, or I'm sorry, plus c for you guys, I keep forgetting, plus c, it's b in the states, c here. All right, and this common difference is always my m. So y equals two times x is what I have so far for the rule. So there's no thought involved there. It's just two. Whatever number you have, these are common difference, goes in front of your x. Okay? Now, but we do not know if that's the completed pattern. So what we have to do is we have to test a, one, of the, one of the points. And we typically use the first one simply because we know the numbers are smaller. It really doesn't make any difference. And today I'm going to give you a little secret as well that works on some of them. It doesn't work on all of them. So what we're going to do is plug in 1 and see if, it, and see if we get that. So my x value is 1, my y value is 3. So I should get 3 equals 2 times 1. So all I've done is I put my y value in place of the y and my x value in front of the, in place of the x. And now I'm just going to do the math. So that says 3 should equal 2 times 1, which is 2. Well, 3 does not equal 2. So remember, the second part of the algorithm is just to say, what can I do to that 2 to make it equal 3? Just add 1 to it, yeah? And that gives me 3 equals 3, which completes my pattern. So if that's the case, then what I have to do is use that plus 1 as my constant. So my completed pattern is y equals 2x plus 1. And that is the rule. And they don't change. So we're going to practice again. What you're looking at is you're practicing the rule, but you're also getting the rule from a drawing this time and then completing the chart instead of them giving you the chart.